Well, COVID-19 has highlighted the importance of medical staff. Many doctors say that the camaraderie and sheer dog termination of practitioners has been inspiring. But the emergency room, however, brings its own thrills and terrors. Dr. Anne Bickett has been an emergency doctor in Johannesburg for over three decades now. And she's compiled her experiences, sometimes scary, sometimes downright hilarious, into a book titled Saving a Stranger's Life. Well, the good doctor and now author joins us live for this discussion. Dr. Anne, good to have you. I mean, I, I suppose we do get stories, right, um, about medical doctors during this time and the horrors and the terrors, but you have encapsulated your whole experiences um, in this book. I mean, what do we find from what you've archived? I think it's been a very tough time for a lot of the doctors, but we've stood together, the nursing staff, a lot of the other medical personnel. Um, right at the beginning, I think we were really worried about what was going to happen. We all ran around trying to get ready. We weren't really sure what we were getting ready for, but we scurried about. Um, and then not much happened, which made us all not really know what to do. But when the wave did hit, um, I must say I'm very proud of the team that I work in. Um, all of my colleagues stepped up to the line and just were amazing, really were amazing. Yeah. Can you take us through some of the experiences? I mean, when we talk about some of the thrills and the terrors and sometimes hilarious experiences, please just give us some examples, just a window into a day in your life. So COVID's changed our life quite a bit. Um, you know, the, everybody's in masks. It's hard to recognize people. It's very stressful to work um, under those conditions. But the, the sense of camaraderie is still there. Um, and now that we less under lockdown, we're seeing more of the things that we've always seen in the ED, which is things like people falling off the roof or crashing their bicycles or having heart attacks or having any one of the hundreds of thousands of reasons that people can arrive at the ED. Um, and some of those can be funny. Um, some of them, as you say, can be, can be really tragic. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Anne, who then cares for the caregiver? Because in this instance, we're seeing our healthcare front line workers, you know, obviously coming and showing up every single day, obviously through this unseen and, you know, sort of intangible virus, yet it's taken so many people's lives and the whole country is depending on our medical doctors uh, to do the best that they can for the whole country. But then who cares then for the caregiver? Well, I think actually we care for each other. That's certainly been my experience in the unit that we work in. We've had quite a lot of nurses who've become ill, quite a lot of doctors who've become ill. We've had a lot of doctors who haven't been working in a clinical setting for many years, people who've specialised in very particular things who don't see patients on the ground who've literally pitched up in the ED with their stethoscopes that they've dug out of the back of the cupboard and said, I'm here to help, I'm here to work, you know, which I think is just shows amazing fortitude. And... Um, you know, if, if one of us falls ill, one, somebody else steps in. It's been an amazing team. So sometimes at the last minute, you know, we find that somebody can't make it or we're short-staffed in terms of nursing. But I think we've done a good job of trying to look after each other, look out for each other and appreciate each other. I'd say we've, we've really come a long way in terms of respect. It's there have been some very good things that have come out of COVID. Yeah, and I know that at times it's easy to also blame the health system and say it's not doing enough, it's not doing the best that it should be. There's so many people dying. I suppose my question is, through this book, what are you trying to also demystify? What are you trying to highlight so people are more sensitized and they understand exactly uh, what happens in the ER, especially with what doctors are going through? Yeah, I, th I think uh, as an overall, the health system in South Africa has done unbelievably well. I mean, we have an advantage in that we're following on three months behind a lot of the other countries. So what we see went wrong there and what we see we could do better at, um, we've obviously had a chance to try and get ourselves ready. There were a few times when the wave really hit us that we really struggled to find beds. Um, we didn't anticipate as many people being in the PUI in the under investigation sort of category. So we had a, a COVID ward ready and we had a non-COVID ward ready but unfortunately most of the patients fell in between those but the the physicians advisory board in the hospitals are really quick to rectify that and get it sorted mm. so I, I think that the message that I'd, 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 I would say is that I'm very proud of how South Africa has dealt with everything so far um, and in addition to which the the other things that keep coming into the ED that we've tried you know, to keep in a separate area. So we try and keep two streams so that people don't get ill in the emergency department, that the people with respiratory things are kept separate. So I think it's been pretty well thought out.
All right, Dr. Anne, thank you so much for joining us, Dr. Anne Bickett.